I was having a talk with some people just the other day, and we were talking about um, the, uh, the 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 Lord of the Rings and the Ring and whatnot, because they've been they've been playing the Lord of the Rings movies um, in a theater near where I live, the extended edition and stuff. And uh, so, like tonight or uh, tomorrow, excuse me, tomorrow they're playing Return of the King. Those the past two weeks on Wednesdays they played the Two Towers and Fellowship. So, I was, you know, talking, you know, about some <laughs> Lord of the Rings stuff with some people because um, some of the people that we're seeing Lord of the Rings with, they've never seen Lord of the Rings before. Um, some, like, young people and whatnot. And we, uh... I had this conversation with um, this, this girl named Katie. And we were talking about how uh, Tolkien describes... Target his corpse. Okay. Tolkien describes uh, in his own words that um, Sam, Samwise Gamgee, is the true hero of Lord of the Rings. Um, not Frodo, not Aragorn, not any of these characters. It's Sam. And we are having a talk as to why is that? Why is Sam? And that can be very obvious for some why it is Sam on, like, on one level. But he's definitely, um, how do I best describe this? A lot of people, when they talk about Sam being the real hero of Lord of the Rings, I, I don't, I, I think they get it, but only to a certain degree because they don't, I don't think they fully understand the themes that Tolkien was writing from when he created this character of Sam. So, like, like yesterday, for example, let me, let me explain what I mean. Uh, yesterday on stream, we were talking about um, uh, solipsism. That's a uh, when a person believes that only they exist. Uh, it's kind of like a big manifestation of a of a prideful mind, where it's like. Nothing else exists and nothing else matters except for you at the end of the day. Um, we talked a little bit, a bit about that. We talked about pride. And um, one of the things that we also talked about in like Lord of the Rings is how the ring in its evil, what it does is it finds something in an individual that... Uh, is evil in that person's heart or is the symptom of an evil and it latches on to that person or in there it latches on to that particular and it exemplifies it and torments the person with it or it tempts them so a good example of this I talked about it in my one rings of power video was uh, Boromir Boromir is a character who is motivated by very noble goals. You know, he wants to defend his country and his people, you know, the Gondorians and everything, blah, 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 blah. You know, fight against Mordor and so on and so forth. But Boromir becomes twisted by the ring to the point that he becomes indistinguishable in his action from an orc. And what I mean by that is like, just like how any orc would have fell upon Frodo, killed him, taken the ring, and then taken the ring back to their country. In their case, it'd be Mordor. Boromir falls upon Frodo, tries to kill him, tries to take the ring, and is trying to take it back to Gondor. And so Boromir becomes indistinguishable from the enemy because what the ring has done is the ring has identified in Boromir that he has this love for his homeland, for his people, for all this stuff. And the ring has latched onto that and has turned it from being something that was originally a selfless goal to being a selfish one. I don't want to spend too much time on Boromir because he's a really, you know, heavily explored character in Lord of the Rings. I want to go back to Frodo for a second um, and why Frodo is not the main character, or why he's not the main hero in Tolkien's eyes in Lord of the Rings. So let's go back to Frodo. 
So we, we've talked about how, you know, the ring has a really hard time with finding a foothold in the Hobbit characters in The Lord of the Rings. And the reason why is because the Hobbits in The Lord of the Rings, the, the ones that we're introduced to, they don't desire power. They don't want gold. They're not, like, in it for themselves. Like, they're very simple people. And so the ring really struggles to find a foothold in them. And this is why Bilbo and like Frodo and stuff can carry the ring for as long as they can and not be fully consumed and corrupted by it. But here's the thing. Frodo ultimately does fail in his quest, uh, I guess on an individual level, he does succumb to the ring and its temptation. And it's one of the things that, uh, we were talking about is how and why did this happen? And you actually see how the ring is able to get a foothold in Frodo by some of the things that he says. And it's this. In several or in several cases in the movies and whatnot, you, you see that the character Frodo, he uses this uh these very particular words that betray a lot of what's going on in his mind and his relationship to the ring. And that is that he tends to say things like, this is my quest. I have to do this on my own. This is my burden. All right. And yet, despite this, um, despite these comments, Frodo is surrounded by so many people that want to help him and yet he is what he's doing is he's isolating himself and yes there's a lot of fear involved there too yes what he's doing is he's isolating himself and this is a very beautiful thing because you know again um in let's see how do how do i describe this um the way that the 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 way that the ring works with its corruption of people is very similar to how like the subject of the demonic works in like uh, Christian theology. One of the biggest goals of the demonic in Christianity is to isolate a person, to get a person alone. Because when a person is isolated physically, mentally, and spiritually, they are much easier to manipulate and to tempt because this person has just fallen into themselves, their own feelings, their own problems, their own whatever. This is why solipsism is such a big deal. And it needs to like, you know, you gotta kind of like check yourself occasionally with this um, to not be isolating yourself. And you see, this is exactly what Frodo's doing. And you know, spoiler, this is actually a, this is another form of how pride manifests itself, isolating oneself. Anyway, so, what we see is we see Frodo through the events of the Lord of the Rings continuously isolating himself from the fellowship, from Sam, and so on, until eventually it kind of just becomes, in Frodo's mind, it's just kind of like him and the ring, and like, that's it. To the point, you know, he's even saying to characters like Sam, like, you know, what do you know about this? Like, you don't understand. Like, you don't understand me. And like, blah, blah, blah. And he's getting angry at him. So why is Sam the true hero? Because Sam, throughout the entirety of Lord of the Rings, never once cares about himself, his problems, his burdens, his issues. He's always putting his focus on Frodo and taking care of him. And we talked before how the ultimate weapon against, and this is one of my big issues with the Rings of Power, if Tolkien was here, I mean, he would say it, you know, a lot of people would say it, the ultimate weapon that you can use against evil is humility. Because evil cannot thrive in a heart that is humble. It just can't find a root. And, you know, Pride being, you know, the arch sin that all other sins come from, blah, blah, blah. True humility is a full sacrifice of the self and essentially loving your brother, or in this case, Frodo, your friend, 
you know, more than you care about your own self, your own needs, whatever. Sam is just proud. He's just humble all throughout Lord of the Rings. And so the ring can never fully tempt him and corrupt him. Because he's just always focused on his friend, Frodo. And when the ring does tempt him in the book, it's very brief. It's just like Sam is holding the ring and the ring doesn't even know what the hell to show this guy. It doesn't even know how to tempt him. And Sam sees himself as this big warrior and people are looking up to him and they're seeing him as Sam the Strong. And he's just like, oh, that's stupid. And he just gives the ring back. Because <laughs> he doesn't care about that. He doesn't like put any sort of greater value on himself or his own needs. And so going back to, you know, Rings of Power, everybody in this show, especially Galadriel, it's like, if if the ultimate weapon against the enemy is a humble heart, like you're this insufferable Karen that only cares about yourself, your own problems, you're willing to sacrifice the people who follow you and listen to you. This is established in episode one. She doesn't care about sacrificing her own uh, followers. She doesn't want to listen to them, blah, blah, blah. You're literally the evil you're trying to defeat. Like, what the hell are you trying to do here? So, yeah. So, blah, blah, blah. So, we had a big old talk about Sam and how Sam is, like, the best. And just Sam is awesome. I, I, I love Sam as a character. Um, and I just love how Tolkien hides uh, so many themes and concepts in his writings um, based on, like, his own personal beliefs and stuff. Fascinating. So, yeah. Um, I also just love the fact that, you know, we have Frodo... And, you know, Frodo is, I mean, I'm not saying that Frodo is a terrible person. He's not. And he's never painted to be. Um, but the truth is, is that Frodo can't do it alone. Just like we cannot do it alone. You know, we are human. We're flawed. We have limitations. We only have so much energy and time and so on and so forth. And sometimes we have moments when we feel low and defeated and we need someone, another person, to come in and to help us and offer us the hand. And so we see Frodo, he goes all this way, resisting, resisting, resisting the ring, and he finally reach, he reaches the crack of doom, and he can't do it. And he needs Sam to step in to save him at the end. And it's just such a, it's it's such a, a cool, I mean, I know, I know Tolkien doesn't like allegory, but it's a, uh, there's so many themes in that. Because um, even if Sam held the ring, the ring would have eventually found its way into him in one way or another. Maybe his love for Rosie. It could have corrupted that in some way. Um, it's just cool. So that's it. That was <laughs> insanely profound. Yeah, you know, it's just that's that's just how it is. Um, I think any guy, any gal who has tried to carry the entire weight of the world on their own shoulders can tell you it's too heavy. And the day that you take it off and you start to share it with someone else, a friend, family member, a therapist, a priest, uh, a whatever, it doesn't matter. The day that you do that, you, it's like you get it. Like you understand, oh wait, I was never supposed to carry this alone. And so, and Tolkien has a really, yeah, he's got a cool, uh, he's, he's really playing on that theme in that moment. So anyway, so that is my, th those are, that was our talk on Sam and friends the other day. So I, I love Lord of the Rings and I love Tolkien and I love his writing and I hate rings of power. And that's all I gotta say. <laughs> that's pretty much it.